Then I will call us to order. We'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Code enforcement will remain standing. I'll swear everybody is going to give testimony in. Do you swear from the testimony you give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Case number 2020-795, Susan Bolander, owner. Location of violation 1713 Connecticut Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. Violation St. Cloud City Code Section 24-52A and 24-162A and International Property Maintenance Code Sections 301.2 and 302.1. Description of violation, failure to prohibit but rather allowed an abandoned vehicle and grass weeds to be over the height of eight inches and the exterior property area not being maintained in a clean and sanitary condition at this location. Good afternoon, Pam Neal, City of St. Cloud Code Enforcement Officer. I am presenting this case for the property located at 1713 Connecticut Avenue. At this time, I would like to enter to evidence the following items. Copy of the Curtis of Notice of Violation sent to the owner, copy of the Notice of Violation sent to the by certified mail to the owner and posted on the property and city hall. Copy of the statement of violation notice of hearing sent by certified mail to the owner and posted on the property and city hall. A copy of the PowerPoint presentation, copy of the affidavits of postings, the courtesy notice sent back return to sender, the certified mail receipts, copy of the deed to the property, copy of the code sections in violation, Copy of the costs incurred if the special magistrate finds a respondent in violation in the amount of $251.05. On May 11th, I went to verify Wait, I'm sorry. On May 11th, I received a complaint about an abandoned vehicle dislocation. Um, on May 11th, I went to verify, and there was a black car that is inoperable with no tag. And I took one photo. On May 18th, a reinspection was made, and the car was still there, inoperable with no tag. On May 19th, a courtesy notice was sent to the owner. On June 30th, a reinspection was made. The car was still there in violation, and now the grass and weeds are high, and the exterior property has miscellaneous debris. And I took seven photos. On July 13th, the reinspection was made. The car was still there in violation. The grass and weeds were still not mowed, and the exterior property had all the miscellaneous debris. I talked to the neighbor and he stated that he had talked to the owner and the property was going up for auction. So I took one photo. On August 12th, a reinspection was made and none of the violations were corrected. I took two more photos. On August 12th, a notice violation was sent by certified mail to the owner. I took two photos. On August 13th, I posted the property and City Hall. An affidavit of posting was done. I took two photos. On August 25th, a reinspection was made. None of the violations were corrected. On August 26th, I posted the property and City Hall with a copy of the statement of violation, notice of hearing sent by certified mail to the owner. An affidavit of posting was done, and I took two photos. On September 9th, a reinspection was made. The car was still there in violation. The grass was still high, and the exterior property had not been cleaned up. I took three photos. On September 15th, a reinspection was made, and none of the violations were corrected. And I took three more photos.
Um, the respondent is not here. It is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of allowing an abandoned vehicle, high grass and weeds to be above the height of eight inches and the exterior property area not being maintained in a clean and sanitary condition at this location and to have all the violations corrected by September 30th, 2020 or pay a fine of $250 a day until compliance is met. The city would like to also recover the cost incurred in bringing this case before the special magistrate in the amount of $251.05 to be paid within seven days of the written order of the magistrate as well. And that concludes my presentation. Is somebody mowing a part of that property? The neighbor. I figured that's what you're gonna tell me. Okay, based on the evidence testimony received, I'll find in favor of the city, find the respondent is in violation for having uh, overgrown grass and weeds above the height of eight inches, disabled and abandoned motor vehicle, and miscellaneous junk and debris on the property. Order the respondent to cure those violations by September 30th, 2020. Uh, if not cured by that date, a fine of $250 per day for each day the uh, property remains in violation shall accrue. Also order the respondent to pay the city's administrative costs and prosecution in the amount of $251.05, which amount shall be due within seven days of my written order. Thank you. Case number 2020-813, Nicholas and Monica Iskar, owners. Location of violation, 1701 Kentucky Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. Violation, St. Cloud City Code, sections 24-162A and Land Development Code, sections 3.3.1F and 13.3. Description of violation, failure to prohibit but rather allowed high grass weeds to be over the height of eight inches and construction on a residential dwelling prior to obtaining the necessary permits required at this location. Good afternoon, Pam Neal, City of St. Cloud Code Enforcement Officer. I am presenting this case for the property located at 1701 Connecticut Avenue. At this time, I would like to enter into evidence the following items. Yeah, is that what I, oh, I'm sorry, I meant Kentucky. <laughs> um, a copy of the courtesy courtesy notice sent to the owner to both addresses, copy of the notice of violations sent by regular mail to the owner to both addresses, copy of the notice of violations sent by certified mail to the owner to the address on the property appraiser site, a copy of the notice of violation with the new date sent by regular mail to the owner and posted on the property and city hall, Copy of the statement of violation, notice of hearing sent by certified mail to the owner and posted on the property and city hall. Copy of the PowerPoint presentation, copy of the affidavits of postings, the courtesy notice sent to the address of the violation returned to sender, the notice of violation sent to the address of the violation returned to sender, the certified mail receipt from the notice of violation the certified mail receipt from the statement of violation notice of hearing, a copy of the deed to the property, a copy of the code sections in violation, a copy of the costs incurred if the special magistrate finds a respondent in violation in the amount of On May 18th, 2020, I received a complaint about construction being done in high grass and weeds at this location. On May 19th, a courtesy notice was sent to the owner to both addresses. I took two photos. On June 1st, a reinspection was made and the grass and weeds were not mowed and the permit was not applied for. On June 2nd, a notice of violation was sent by regular mail to the owner to both addresses. On June 22nd, Officer Sparkman performed a reinspection and the grass and weeds were not mowed and the permit was not applied for. She spoke to Mark, an employee for the contractor, and he gave her the number for the contractor and she called and left a message for him to call her back. On June 24th, a notice violation was sent to the owner by certified mail to the address on property appraiser site. 
Officer Sparkman also called the owner and the contractor, letting them know that the permit had been disapproved because the survey showing the setbacks were not submitted. On August 3rd, a reinspection was made and the grass and weeds were not mowed and the permit had been denied again. And three photos were taken. On August 4th, I emailed the owner and told him the permit was still disapproved. It had been disapproved on July 20th and that the grass was still not mowed. I gave him until August 7th or the case would be forwarded to the special magistrate. On August 7th, a reinspection was made and the grass was still not mowed and nothing had been done with the permit. On August 10th, a notice violation was sent to the owner with the new date and posted on the property and City Hall, and after the David of posting was done, I also emailed the owner informing him the survey was still not submitted, and six photos were taken. On August 19th, the reinspection was made, and it appeared the grass had been mowed, but it was already in violation again, and nothing had been done with the permit. And that's the one photo I took. On August 25th, a reinspection was made, and it appeared the grass had been mowed again, but it was still in violation, and still nothing had been done with the permit. And two photos were taken. On August 26th, I posted the property and city hall with a copy of the statement of violation, notice of hearing, sent by certified mail to the owner to the address on property appraiser site, an affidavit of posting was done. And I took two photos. On September 8th, a reinspection was made and the grass was mowed, but nothing had been done with the permit. And I took two photos. On September 15th, a reinspection was made and the grass was in violation again. And the paperwork that was needed for the permit was resubmitted on September 9th. I took two photos. And the respondent is here. So it is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of high grass and weeds to be above the height of eight inches and construction on a residential dwelling prior to obtaining the necessary permits required at this location and to have the grass and weeds mowed by September 25th, 2020, and to have the permit obtained by October 1st, 2020, or pay a fine of $250 a day until compliance is met. The city would like to also recover the costs incurred in bringing this case before the special magistrate in the amount of $243.20 to be paid within seven days of the written order of the magistrate as well. And that concludes my presentation. Respondent, you can come up. Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Nicholas Isgar. I'm one of the property owners. You can, if you, if you're comfortable, you can take that okay. off. Okay, I, I didn't know how it worked yes. here, so I appreciate. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Let me swear you in before you give testimony. Okay. Do you swear from the testimony you give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Um. Uh, she she's right uh, absolutely um, I've tried to keep up with the property um, based on the fact that we had not gotten the permits um, I thought the permits for the addition that we were going to be uh, creating uh, were put in at the same time that we did the leveling permits and also the roofing permits um, so come to my realization that my contractor forgot to submit those permits to you guys um, and then we've been playing catch up to try to get them through ever since but COVID and everything. So yes, we are, um, they've, they have gotten everything received to them as of uh, uh, September 9th, I think it was. Um, and they said that the permanent should be through um, by October 3rd at the latest, um, after I talked to the building department. Um, it's been a real hassle trying to get in contact with people from the building department. I emailed um, the, the site on the St. Cloud website um, and people don't ever email me back. 
Um, and I apologize if you know you had to send out many letters. Uh, I I live in Davenport, and my mail is terrible where I live, um, so I was not getting a lot of these certified letters. Okay. Um, the grass and all of that were being taken care of by my contractor and his guys. So when they were working on the property, they were taking care of the grass. I have now hired a company that is um, doing it bi-weekly um, every month now. Uh, they just started this month. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be taking care of everything. Okay. Uh, and just from the, from the photographs that, that were presented by the code enforcement officer, whoever's maintaining the grass, you know as, as well as any of us do, this is the time of year that that grass is growing quick. Yeah. And so it may be, it, it looks to me like maybe the contractor wasn't mowing it as low as maybe they could have. Yeah. If they're coming every other week, they may need to make sure when they do come, they're knocking it down pretty low because yeah. in two weeks, they can get back up over eight inches if it wasn't um, knocked down pretty I low. I also have one away. question. As far as the stop working on the house, um, like the, some of the stuff they were doing was, you know, flooring, painting, you know, just repairing drywall. That stuff wouldn't be associated with permitting, right? Or That's going to be a question for the building department that I can't answer. I am just the hearing officer. I cannot okay. speak for the city. I just hear the cases and rule on the on the evidence testimony that's presented to me. All so right. that's gonna be a question you need to go to the building department with on what you can do while that stop work order is is in place. Okay. I also wanna cover, and I'm gonna want code enforcement to come back up. Um, eventually, you don't have to write the second. So your testimony is that you have, you've resubmitted or you've submitted additional information to the building department in yes. relationship to the permit. Yeah, we've had and to submit about two or three times now. You've this heard back verbally, I think you said, from yes. the building department that that permit should be issued by October 3rd, it's, but it's still in review. Correct. Okay. Uh, if you wouldn't mind stepping a few feet to the side, and I'm going to ask the code enforcement officer to, if, if she has any knowledge of that conversation. Um, I don't have any knowledge of that conversation, but he did resubmit it on September 9th. So um, it is taken a while. That's why I put it out till August. I mean, until October 1st to try to get that approved, so. Okay, well, and the, I think you pick up on why that's relevant to me, is if he's hearing from building department that October 30 should have a permit at hand, I'm going to extend that date unless code enforcement okay. has a reason to say no. no. Um, and to be on the safe side, I'm going to add a week to it and make that October 8th. Okay. And because while it still is in review, what you need to be aware of is that they might still have review comments or they might have something else. So make sure that you're staying on top of any communication you get back from them. And if you do, if they do say, we need you to submit something different, we need you to submit additional information, that you jump right on that. Because that October 8th deadline, that's going to be the deadline for having that permit in hand. Can I say something? Sure. If code enforcement officer wouldn't mind stepping a few so, feet to the side. So as far as the outside structure that is going to be the, going to be the addition, all of those boards are only tacked up. Um, for like security purposes to keep material and tools in. It wasn't an actually, I mean, if it, if, it ever, if it needs to be knocked down until I get the actual permits through, to not incur any fines. It's an option to you. Okay. It, it is your choice. Okay. You know, it, because one of the things, uh, if, if you've performed additional work, one of the ways of curing, that, or work without permits, one of the ways of curing that is to remove the work that was done without permits. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can just get those permits in hand. But if it's looking, if there's a problem that pops up and you're not able to get those permits, and if it's if it's something that's on you, because frankly I think and I think code enforcement, if there's a if there's a holdup in the city and it's still in review and that review hasn't come, I think the city and I certainly as the hearing officer would not impose fines if it's the city's fault that you're held up. But if there's something that's wrong with the permitting, something that you know something that you didn't foresee then that may be an option you need to consider. Yeah, but I mean, there shouldn't be any problems with the permitting as of this point. So October 8th for that, it sounds like everybody is, is okay with that date. Grass and weeds, you say you have somebody on board, so do you have any problem with the September 25th date for that being cured that they've asked for? And the last point, they've asked for administrative costs of $243.20. Pursuant to statute, the city is entitled to collect its costs of prosecution. Typically, that will be due within seven days of the date that I enter a written order. Okay. Uh, that written order will probably be signed by Friday. Um, so that's when, the, when, when I sign that order is when that seven days starts, starts ticking. Okay. But since you're here, one of the things I like to ask is, does that create a financial hardship for you to have to pay that amount in seven days? As because long, As long as I can use the debit card, that's fine. Uh, is, does that no, city? You no? have to pay with um, cash or money order okay. check are the options. Okay. I could, I could go get cash. That's not a problem. 
and you don't have to pay it today, but just within seven days of the date that I signed that order, which that date will probably be Friday. That's where, when that clock will start. Right Clerk's office? To me, I'll give you my, my business card. Okay. Okay, so that, that is my ruling. Then I find in favor of the city, find that the respondent was in violation of city code for overgrown grass and weeds and also for construction work without, without proper permits. Okay. Order the respondent to cure the grass violation by September 25th, 2020. Order a cure to the no permit violation by October 8th, by which I mean permits to be issued by the city by October 8th. If not issued, then the respondent will have to consider whether or not he needs he wants to remove the the work that was performed. Uh, if the if either of those violations are not cured by the time that I uh, set for them to be cured, a fine of $250 per day will accrue until compliance is met. Also, order the respondent to pay the amount of $243.20, uh, which are the city's administrative costs and prosecution, which amount shall be due within seven days of the date of my written order. One more comment for the respondent on the grass violation really and truly make sure you stay on top of whoever you paid to, to cut it because part of the impact of today's order is if it happens again, code enforcement can bring that back as a repeat violation, which means that you know, if you're here on a first violation, I will give time to cure it. I'm required by statute to do that. If you're here on a repeat violation, code enforcement can ask and I can order that those fines be backdated to the date that the repeat violation, that they first observed that repeat violation, and those fines can be up to $500 per day. So you definitely don't want to have to come back on a repeat violation. So make sure you stay on top of whoever's mowing that grass. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 2020-1371, Diamond Homes, LLC owners, location of violation 1106 Oregon Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. Violation St. Cloud City Land Development Code Section 3.3.1D. Description of violation failure to prohibit but rather allow two permits for this property to expire at this location with work already started and no inspections completed. Good afternoon, Melissa Howells, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of St. Cloud. I am presenting this case for the property located at 1106 Oregon Avenue. At this time, I would like to enter into evidence the following items. Copy of the notice of violations sent by certified mail posted on the property and City Hall. Copy of the statement of violation and notice of hearing sent by certified mail posted on the property and City Hall. Copy of the PowerPoint presentation affidavit of postings, evidence of mailings, the code sections in violation of, a copy of the deed to the property, a copy of the cost incurred if the magistrate finds the respondent in violation in the amount of $222.40, and a copy of the expired permit records. And the respondent is not here. On October 17, 2019, a roofing permit was issued for this property and a separate permit was issued for remodeling. No inspections were ever performed for either permit from the building department and as such, the permits expired on April 14, 2020. On June 11, 2020, the building department notified the respondent by regular mail and email that the two permits for this property expired on April 14. In the email, they also attached the form needed to request the renewal of the permits. The respondent responded to the email that same day, stating he would fill out the form for the extension. On June 22nd, Officer Durbin sent out a notice of violation by certified mail to the property owner and the registered agent for high grass and no permit. On July 9th and July 14th, photos were taken of the structure under construction. This one was on the 9th, this one was on the 14th. On July 21st, after reviewing Officer Durbin's case while on vacation, I sent out a notice of violation by certified mail to the owner of record and the registered agent for expired permits. I posted the property and city hall and I took a photo of the posting. 
on July 30th, and again on August the 10th, a reinspection revealed the permits were not renewed. On August 12th, I sent out a statement of violation and notice a hearing by certified mail to the owner of record, the registered agent. I posted the property in City Hall. I did an affidavit of posting, and I took 10 photographs. On September 14th, I checked and the permits have not been renewed. It is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of having two permits expire over 180 days from the date of issuance with no inspections and not correcting the violation within the time specified. I would like to give the respondent until September 30th, 2020 to renew both permits or accrue a fine in the amount of $100 a day until compliance is met. The city would also request that the cost incurred in bringing this case before the magistrate in the amount of $222.40 be paid within seven days of the written order by the special magistrate. And that concludes my presentation. Have you heard anything from the respondent? Nothing. Because they went out there and they fixed the plastic. Well, I brought this case last month for high grass, too, so, and I've not heard anything on that case either. Well, I, when so. I first started going through the pictures, I saw the, the hole that was in the plastic, and somebody repaired that mm -hmm. hole in the plastic, so it's not completely abandoned. But No. And I do have the, the email correspondence from the building department where he responded saying he was going to take care of it. Okay, so the city has heard something from the respondent. The building department has, okay. yes, sir. Okay, based on the evidence testimony received, find the respondent is in violation for expired permits. And that's the only violation, right? Yes, sir. The, and this one. Give the respondents until September 30th, 2020 to renew both permits, both expired permits. If not re renewed with, by September 30th, the fine in the amount of $100 per day shall accrue for each day. Until compliance met, is met, also order the respondent to pay the city's administrative costs in the amount of $222.40, which amount shall be due within seven days of the date of my written order. Thank you, sir. Case number 2020-1582, Elizabeth Ann Cortez Buffington and Jeffrey Scott Buffington, owners. Location of violation, 825 Maryland Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. Violation 2015 International Property Maintenance Code 302.1, 303.1, and 108.1.3, adopted by the St. Cloud City Code Section 10 33. Description of violation failure to prohibit but rather allowed exterior property areas and swimming pool water not being maintained in a clean and sanitary condition, property unfit for human occupation due to utilities. Good afternoon. Alex Miller, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of St. Cloud. I'm presenting this case for the property located at 825 Maryland Avenue. At this time, I would like to enter into evidence the following items. Copy of the notice of violation sent by certified mail posted on the property in City Hall. Copy of the statement of violation and notice of hearing sent by certified mail posted on the property in City Hall. Copy of the PowerPoint presentation, affidavits of posting, evidence of mailings, the code sections in violation of, a copy of the deed to the property, and a copy of the costing court if the magistrate finds a respondent in violation in the amount of $245.40. The respondent is not here. On August 20, 2020, during routine patrol, I noticed an accumulation of solid waste and exterior property areas were not being maintained in a clean and sanitary condition. While taking photos on the property, I was approached by the owner, Elizabeth Buffington, who was trying to find out about the violations that needed to be corrected. 
At this time, I also noticed the property appeared to be without electricity and the pool water was not being maintained. I finished taking the photos and left the property. I later verified with OUC that this property is currently without power. The property has been in violation with the same issues five separate times. And I was advised by my supervisor to start the case by posting the property with a notice of violation and sending it by certified mail. Three photos were taken. On August 21st, I sent out a notice of violation by certified mail to the owners and the tenant on record to correct the violation within, within three calendar days. On August 24, Officer House and I posted the property in City Hall with a notice of violation, did an affidavit of posting, and photos were taken showing non-compliance. Red tags were put on both doors at the structure stating that no one can be living in the resident residence until such time the utilities are back at the, on at the resident residence. Five photos were taken. On September 1st, Officer House and I re-inspected the property and took photos showing non-compliance on all the violations. Three photos were taken. On September 2nd, I sent out a statement of violation and notice of hearing to the owners and tenant on record by certified mail, posted the property in City Hall, did an affidavit of posting, and took a photo of the posting. On September 11, court enforcement received another complaint about the exterior property not being maintained. Officer House went to the property and verified that the property now has had more items lying around the property and took photos of no compliance. Three photos were taken. It is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of allowing the exterior property area areas and swimming pool water no be, to now be maintained in a clean and sanitary condition. Property is unfit for human occupancy due to not having utilities. The city will recommend that the violations be corrected by September 30th, 2020, or accrue a fine in the amount of $100 a day until compliance is met. The city will also request that the cost incurred in bringing this case before the magistrate and the amount of $245 and 40 cents to be paid within seven days of the written order by the special magistrate. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. So when we say it doesn't have utilities, is it just the electricity or is the water turned off too? No, the water is also, they were disconnected as of September 15. Okay. September 15th of last year? No, this year, I'm sorry. This so yesterday? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a photograph of the pool? Um, I do. It's in, um, yes, it should be right there. Oh, no, sorry. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's the water. Um, they have one of those half screens, if you can see it on the I back. see it now. Yeah. No, now I see it. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Got it. Okay. There was an optical illusion there, and I wasn't seeing I a pool in that picture. I see it now. Okay. Based on the evidence testimony received, I'll find the respondent is in violation for failing to maintain the exterior of the property. 
allowing the swimming pool water to not being maintained in a clean and, sanitary, clean and sanitary condition. Also find the property is unfit for human occupancy due to not having water or electric as of today. Uh, order that these violations be cured by September 30th, 2020. If not cured by that time, if I, by that time a fine in the amount of $100 per day shall accrue until compliance is met. Also order the respondents to pay the administrative costs of the city in the amount of $245.40, which amount shall be due within seven days of the date of my written order. Because this is owner and tenant, I would normally do those orders joint and several. Is that okay with the city? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Unfinished business, none. New business none. Next scheduled meeting October 21st, 2020. Anything else from the city? No, sir. Then we are adjourned.